is tearing down the house. Double duty for our pet trainer 911. Cats, kittens, facts, and fictions. Learn which feline friend is right for you. And meet some very special foster parents providing hope and life for the unwanted. All coming up on Animal Attractions. Welcome to Animal Attractions TV. I'm Megan Blake, and this is Tia, an adorable rat terrier who's celebrating her third birthday today. Tia, make a wish. <laughs> okay, now I know that um, having a birthday party for a dog may seem a little over the top, but it's a really fun way to spend quality time with your pet. And spending time with these precious creatures who share our world is an integral part of successful pet ownership. And it's one of the hundreds of things that we try to share with you to help your relationship with your pet be as good as possible. Today our show is jam-packed with expert advice and encouragement. Mark and Iris Kramer got two dachshunds, one for him and one for her. Because little dogs should be easy to manage, right? Wrong! All these dogs have managed to do is eat their carpet, their walls, and leave a path of destruction and heartbreak behind them. What is this? What did you do? Honey? Honey Bun is clearly the dominant dog between the two dogs. So although Bo, through the first few months that we had him, did minor puppy things, what happened was after Honey Bun came into the house and she started to do mischievous things, he is a follower, so he felt it was incumbent upon him to do the same thing that she did. The mischief quickly turned into expensive damage. They were partners in crime in that they created incredible, not only mischief, but destruction within the house. Uh, Bo is the one who has real watchdog tendencies. And whenever the bell rings, he just goes berserk. He runs to the door and then she follows along with him. Hello. Oh, sorry about the dogs. No problem. Have a nice day. And they both bark and bark. If it's, if it's somebody they don't know, the barking continues until the people leave the house. So it's really difficult to have, it was very hard to have people over. They will chew anything. They chew through towels. We found carpeting being chewed. The wooden part of the stairway was chewed through and they started making holes in the walls. Bo, because he's a larger dog, has the ability to jump higher. So if you left any food on the table, be it cereal or steak or whatever, he would be quick to grab it like lightning. It just wasn't working. So we knew we needed somebody who was used to working with dogs who had already been destroying houses, and it seemed like that's what we had. They never had the dogs trained, the little dachshunds. So um, they were just doing what a dog going to do. You know, be bad. The dogs are running the house. And if there ain't no structure from the owners, the dogs is, is just gone to the dogs, if you want to say. <laughs> How you doing? Hi. Hi, I'm Iris. Come on in. I would just follow the sound of the barking. Oh, okay. Oh, oh I hear them. They already told me when I rang the doorbell, the dogs was going to be barking and they wasn't going to be quiet. And they were right. These oh. are just some of the things that they do that drive us crazy. Oh, uh-huh. Okay. Those little dogs pull you? Yes. And how old are they? They're about a year. Oh, and they're not housebroken? Not really. Oh, uh-huh. They sleep in the bed with you? Yes. Oh, we're yeah. dealing with two spoiled dogs. That's right. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to take the dogs for 30 days, and uh, then we're going to train you for seven when I bring your dogs home, and when I leave, the dog leaves. And then after the seventh day, the dogs are all yours, and you're well-trained, and if we can train the owners, the dogs will stay trained. 
It might take longer to train us. <laughs> So when I took the dogs from the, the owner's home, I knew that they weren't going to roam around my house because they used the bathroom in their house, they're going to use it here. So I immediately tethered them down to get them comfortable with me. We treat all the dogs the same way, but we do do a special training with the little dogs. We train them on our needs because I believe standing tall and the dog is down there looking down on him, it's nothing but a big echo to him. So I'll get on my knees and go through his commands with him. And they go through the sit, the down, the stay, just like the big dogs. Stop, sit, down, stay. And then once he learns it and he's hearing me, I'll stand tall and tell him. Once we take the dog through his obedience and he gets something, you can go over to him, tell him to drop it or tell him to leave it. Drop it, leave it and take it away from me, and he doesn't try you. On the paperwork, it says they drop, won't drop clothes and socks and shoes, so I'll take food. I work them with real food, with a burger. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. And if a dog would drop a hamburger or a pizza chicken or a pizza, he had drop them socks or them shoes or those sandals or some clothing. He would drop it. How are you doing today? All right, how are you doing? All right. Yeah, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm good now. You too, sir. David. One of the problems were when a doorbell rings, they constantly bark. So I got a doorbell and I had somebody to push it and the dog started barking quiet. and I took and let him run to the door and I told him quiet and then I'll send him back to timeout. 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 Every day I may hit the doorbell just to see can I get them to bark. And before they leave. Quiet. Timeout. They ain't barking anymore. Timeout. I know the dogs are ready to leave boot camp when the dogs are listening to me. Because if the dogs are listening to me, they listen to the owners. And that's where the work starts when I start working with the owners. How you doing? Here's your baby. <laughs> Coach brought them back and he did a demonstration of, you know, some of the things that he taught them to do. Okay, so what we do is I tell them heal. Heel, come here. Come here, heel. Come here, heel. Place. Place. Stop, sit, down. And I think that Mark and I just kind of watched with our mouths open, down. wondering what happened to our dogs. Time out. Coach came and worked with us, and he corrected us. Say heel. 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 So it took a lot of practice until we got the right tone of voice and, you know, we got to, you know, pulling on their leashes and not telling them that they were good because there are certain behaviors that he says are just expected from them. Sit down. Sit down. Stay. You're doing real good with the dogs. All you got to do is do it every day for 10 or 15 minutes and just be consistent we saw that it was something we definitely had to stick to because the dogs can see if you are getting weak. <laughs> we made it home. How you doing? Final day? Hey guys. How are you doing again? So we get to keep them for good. Get to keep them for good. It was like they weren't our dogs. It's like someone came down, and I don't know what fairy or what angel came down and took all the bad behavior and replaced it with good behavior. You did real good. And if you got any problems with the dog, you just call me. I'm always your dog trainer. And all you got to do is just keep taking them through their uh, commands. So you just give me a call whenever you Thank you. 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 Thank you
It's a delight being able to walk the dogs down the street and they listen. Walking with them is a pleasure. We take them for walks every day and they strut around very proudly. It's a delight when you can have people over and they listen. It's just, it makes having a, the pet experience that much more pleasurable, having a dog that listens as well as is loving. There's many reasons why a cat can sneeze, some of them more serious than others. Sometimes if they just get a little irritation in their nose, like if they sniff up a little dust or something, they can sneeze intermittently. However, if they sneeze more frequently than that on a regular basis or if they start having any ocular discharge, which is eye discharge or nasal discharge, it's probably time to see your veterinarian. One of the more common causes of sneezing is called an upper respiratory tract infection, which is kind of like a cold. You may notice that your cat may have some discharge from his eyes or maybe his nose. They can even lose their appetite at times. If this happens, it's best to see your veterinarian so they can help you get your cat through that with some supportive care. Sometimes there are also some more serious causes too, which is the other reason why you want to see your veterinarian. They can have polyps in their nose or even tumors, or sometimes they can get something stuck up there, which we call a foreign body. I know, I'm sorry. One surprising cause of a cat sneezing is dental disease. Specifically, if they have an abscess of one of their teeth, it can cause them to sneeze as well. So, a sneeze now and then shouldn't be really anything to worry about, but if it's happening on a regular basis, it's best to get it checked out. Tiny kittens to fat cats. Furry felines make great companions. But just like dogs, not all cats are the same. There are arguably 35 to 45 different registered breeds, all with different personality traits and behaviors. So how do you pick the right cat or kitten for you? There are a lot of assumptions about kittens and cats which might lead people to pick the wrong kind or just not be prepared for cat ownership. Cats are such a popular choice for pets because they can be extremely social, cuddly, playful and interactive. All descriptions that also fit dogs. But since cats aren't pack animals like the dog, they're easier to care for in that they are more independent. If they have their basic needs like food, water, a litter box, a nice place to sleep, some toys, and maybe a fun window to look out of, they are perfectly content when left alone. You first need to think of your lifestyle. What's your work schedule like? Do you have kids or other pets? Do you travel a lot? Do you enjoy grooming your cat? What exactly are you looking for in a kitty? Cat breeds can be divided into two categories to make your decision a little easier. Short hair cats, like the Egyptian Mao, Cornish Rex, and Burmese. Then there's the long hair, like the Himalayan, Persian, or Siberian, whose thick coats were needed to protect them from their native cold climates. Their luxurious coats are beautiful, but before you choose one of these, be sure to have the time to invest in keeping them untangled and shiny. The American short hair was introduced into the United States in the late 1800s when this working cat made its way over here on ships that they were to keep rat free. This cat, along with being a talented mouser, enjoys great longevity, hearty health, and is friendly with children and dogs. How about an engaging creature that's known as a living relic? Meet the Egyptian Mao. This fascinating cat was the subject of ancient Egyptian art. And because it's the only spotted domestic cat, these markings suggest that it originated from an ancient subspecies of wild African cat. So if you're seeking a playful, beautiful, clean partner, the Siamese, Oriental Shorthair, or Egyptian Mao are high contenders. An ideal cat for city folk or anyone living in an apartment is the Ragdoll. They are by far the most docile and easygoing cat breed. They're so gentle that they won't even defend themselves in a natural environment and so they really should be indoor-only cats. Statistically, indoor cats live an average of 13 to 14 years, almost twice as long as even well-cared-for outdoor cats. So to keep your kitty around as long as possible, consider keeping him in the house. 
If you have allergies and are still set on a kitty, the Cornish Rex and Devon Rex are considered by experts to be hypoallergenic breeds, which means they are less likely to induce allergies. A cat without a tail? A cat known as a dog cat? If this sounds interesting, the Manx might be for you. Most of them are tailless, although they can have stubby tails or even an occasional regular tail as tails are needed in their genetic pool. Aside from the tail situation, they have an unusual look in that their back legs are much longer than their front, giving them a characteristic bunny hop. And here's another interesting breed, the Scottish Fold. Their name refers to their ears that fold downward and forward onto their round faces. They're hardy cats like their Scottish barnyard ancestors. The original one was a farm cat named Susie that a shepherd used to selectively breed to create this unique Scottish fold. Like mutts, there are countless combinations of cat breeds waiting to be adopted from shelters. If you decide to go this route, consider the traits of the breeds that might have gone into the cat you fancy. Pick it up and see what kind of handling it loves or will simply tolerate. Whatever you choose, from purebred ragdoll to feral stray, if you select wisely and consider your lifestyle, chances are you'll find the perfect kitten just for you. Smart, good-natured, with beautiful golden blonde hair. Sound like someone you want to know? Faithful friend and hard worker too, Golden Retrievers are definitely more than just another pretty face. Golden Retrievers, true to their name, love to fetch and love the water. Any water, anytime, anywhere. Fetch it! Originally bred for hunting in England and Scotland, these dogs were developed from a flat-coated retriever in a tweed water spaniel. Some experts say there's a little bloodhound mixed in there too. Whatever the combination, the result is a dog with an amazing retriever instinct who loves to swim in any weather and has an excellent sense of smell and tracking. Add that up with the gentle and loyal temperament. In fact, this dog wants nothing more than to please you. We've always had golden retrievers just because they are good dogs. They're good family dogs and they're really good with kids. She's very friendly. We've never, we've never had a problem with any of our dogs. They've always been um, excited to meet people and excited to play, and they've just always been really good. At full grown, a golden retriever is on average about 22 to 24 inches high. They are also about 65 to 75 pounds and can live between about 10 to 13 years. Because Golden Retrievers shed a lot and are prone to matting, they should be brushed at least once a week. But we'll brush her every couple of days just to keep, it helps keep the house clean and her not shedding so much. And we have a small kiddie pool that we fill up in our backyard and she loves, loves, loves to play in the water. They love to fetch and play games outdoors and they never pass up a chance to jump in the water. Goldens in general, I think you have to have a lot of energy to um, keep them content and keep them happy because they do like to play a lot. And if you don't have time, you know, to go outside if they're not an active person, it's not a good idea to have a golden. If you have a really small yard or a really small house, um, it probably wouldn't be the ideal breed to have because they do require a lot of space just to move around. There are some health concerns that you should be aware of. They're prone to hip problems and other joint diseases, allergies and skin problems, eye problems, thyroid disease, and even some early cancers. So great. it's important to establish a relationship with your veterinarian early and schedule regular exams so that you can catch any of these diseases at their very first sign. She's a very loyal dog and she, um, she's very smart and she likes to be in the middle of everything. She'll sit there and she'll read with you or just still cuddle. Cause she still, she still thinks she's very small, so she still thinks she can fit in your lap and be comfortable, and that's not always the case. My clients that own Golden Retrievers just say that they're the best dogs ever, and most of them will own several over their lifetime. And I have to agree, this is my dog, Mabel. Come on, Mabel. 
Due to the popularity of golden retrievers, make sure to find a conscientious breeder who understands their problems and do their best to select for healthy dogs. For more information, visit our website at animalattractionstv.com. Golden Retrievers just seem to have such a happy outlook in life that if I happen to come back to this world in another life, I'd like to be a Golden. Have you ever considered being a foster parent for lost and abandoned pets? Karen and Rob Bourne did. Over the past three years, they have fostered over 300 dogs. And on top of that, they have found each and every one of them a permanent home. Meet the Bournes. They look normal enough, but take a closer look, and you'll see that they're not your average couple. It's not the custom motorcycles Rob builds out of the Volkswagen Bugs. Nor it's the fact that Karen puts up with Rob building bikes. Nope, it's the fact that they've saved over 300 lives in the last three years just by being foster parents to dogs. Everything got started back when uh, Karen was fostering for the uh, Humane Society. Uh, she got together with uh, some of the other volunteers over there and uh, they decided to start their own organization. STARS stands for Save the Animal Rescue Society. It's just a, a name that we thought would be catchy and cute and just get us out in the public eye. The first dog I brought home I ended up keeping and, the, and the, that's how we lose all the fosters because they fall in love with the dog and they keep it. When, when, when she first started bringing these dogs home, I thought she had lost her mind. She was, uh, uh, we already had uh, a few dogs of our own. Luckily for me, my husband's an animal lover and, and uh, he liked all the dogs. Uh, we started finding homes for the dogs and it got to be interesting. Well, I think that Karen's deep, deep passion is basically what fuels this organization. When I bring a dog home from the shelter, I bring it in the house and I let them in one at a time to get to meet each other, but my husband's strategy is to let them in the backyard and they all meet at the same time. What makes Star so special, we feel, is the fact that the dogs aren't in shelters. They aren't in cages. Hey guys, Sometimes you'll have a dog that absolutely acts horrendous and no one will look at it. But once you take it out, it's in your arms, it's kissing, it's loving, it's happy. But people don't see it if the dog's in a cage. But when they come to our homes and see the dog jumping around and happy and kissing and loving, then they want to take it. His name is Dandy, and he is just the sweetest little boy. That he gets a beauty die. program and his nails cut and his shampoo and uh, his hair done. And, and sometimes they have to go to the groomer and be shaved down because they're um, matted and they were running for a long time. Nobody took care of them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, take him and set him up, take a few pictures of him. He is the picture taker supreme. Come on, Louie. He needs to quit his day job and just take dog pictures. They're gorgeous. That's what gets people to pay attention to them. That's what gets people to take our dogs over somebody else's dogs. Everybody thinks I'm a good photographer, but it's just because if you take 30 pictures, you're bound to get a couple of good ones in the bunch. And uh, we, uh, uh, I crop them and size them and get them all ready for it to go up on the website. When we get an adoption application, we screen, we call the vet and make sure that their animals are up to date on their shots and their heartworm. And we don't adopt it out to anybody for breeding. And we don't, our animals are spayed neutered before they leave. And we'd like to make sure their animals are spayed neutered also. And we'd like to adopt our animals to be an indoor pet. No animal wants to be chained up outside all day. Have a seat. We've got some paperwork we've got to do. That's so cute. We'll uh, uh, check them out and find out if we think they'll be good pet owners. Uh, some pets uh, get hundreds of applications. Some pets get two or three. I initial all these little boxes. This is uh, where it says he's been spayed and neutered. If they're little and cute, their picture doesn't even get up. They don't have time to get up on the internet. They're adopted from word of mouth. And the bigger the dog, the older the dog, the longer it takes. Karen and Rob both do the fostering, and basically without them, 
there wouldn't be a stars. Since we started, uh, Stars has found homes for over 400 dogs, and probably 300 of them have come through our house. Karen, Karen spends a lot of time doing this. I think she uh, she would like to save every dog out there. She she's, uh, probably spends 60 hours a week doing this, uh, just shopping for the for the food for the dogs and uh, all the supplies and. Every time we, uh, we have someone adopt one, I come back the next day, it seems like there's two more. Being a foster parent is the most bittersweet experience you'll ever have. Here's your new dog. Part of your heart leaves every time one of your puppies go. And if you're a selfish person, you cannot be a foster parent. Bye, Marilyn. Bye. I feel happy that we got them a home, and the sad part is there's always another one. So I'm never done. If you enjoy our show, you will love our website. Log on to www.animalattractionstv.com. There's a lot more information on the featured stories you've seen here today, rescue dogs and cats, links to animal shelters and rescue organizations, and a lot of information on Pet Health here. Please check it out.